Welcome ladies and gentlemen the current panic in the markets was expected the speculation reached a level that i never saw in my lifetime the immense euphoria has led to the formation of multiple bubbles simultaneously including bubbles in the housing market the stock market and the cryptocurrencies simultaneously as we will see in this video the current market conditions are a realization of the phenomena known as the minsky moment minsky moment refers to the onset of a market collapse brought on by the reckless speculative activity that defines an unsustainable bullish period minsky moment is named after economist hyman Minsky and defines the point in time where the sudden decline in market sentiment inevitably leads to a catastrophic market crash. Now before you ignore this seemingly boring phenomena and click off this video, you have to realize that the Minsky moment might actually be the accurate description of what the economies across the globe are going through. And I believe this phenomena will be the most important term in economics for the coming decades. And don't take my word for it. In this 10 minutes value packed video, we will connect the dots and look at why the opinion of most brilliant economists and investors like Michael Burry, Mohammed Al Aryan, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger converge to the same conclusion meaning beyond the shadow of a doubt we are heading towards minsky moment which will be catastrophic painful and result in a prolonged bear market also it will give us the clarity we need to prepare for the upcoming storm so there isn't even a slightest of doubt that the american economy is crumbling and it might be the beginning of the collapse of house of cards the bullish enthusiasm has fueled the parabolic trajectory in many markets the key economic indicators no longer paint an optimistic picture investors got overexposed to the stock market and loaded themselves with the riskiest assets one could imagine the stock market has enjoyed a 13 year long bull run with only 2 years in that stretch resulting in negative gains since 2009 the s&p 500 has gained over 500% with drawdown Downs occurring rarely. These times, which made us believe that the market will keep on going up forever and we will make unlimited gains, was made possible by the U.S. Federal Reserve, which enacted a policy of zero percent interest and extreme quantitative easing. And at the same time, the CPI or inflation just hit a 40 years high of 7.5 percent. and it is beginning to look like fed is losing control now for jerome powell the next few months will be critically important and many experts have voiced their concerns mohammed el aryan recently made some stunning comments regarding the fed policy and why he thinks they have lost the narrative with investors who believe the fed is in panic mode let's take a listen we're doing qe with inflation at 7.5% now i don't know whether you think they will turn around at 3 p.m. eastern later this afternoon and say you know what we're just going to stop QE now. Do you think they should? I don't and I don't think they should do an inter meeting um hike not because I don't think they are way behind on policy. They are so far behind John. I don't remember central bank being so far behind. You know, I I warned that this was going to be one of the biggest policy errors. It certainly was one of the biggest inflation miscalls in the history of the Fed and unfortunately my nightmare is playing out. I wouldn't do a a inter uh, meeting. I wouldn't not announce the balance sheet. I wouldn't stop QE suddenly. They should have done that much early. If they do it now, the market will sense blood. They will sense that the Fed is panicking. The Fed has to do three things really quickly. It has to regain control of the inflation narrative. They have to be very straightforward, explain to us why they were so wrong and why we can now believe the inflation forecast. two they have to regain control of the policy um narrative they have to give us some sort of sense of what the soft landing looks like and then three importantly they also have to show a lot more humility now elerian used the term soft landing to warn that powell needs to tighten fast without obliterating the markets i am convinced that a soft landing is not likely and a minsky moment is on the horizon and 20 plus years of fed policy reveals consistent cycles of building and then bursting bubbles the fed's radical covid response look much like their policy following the tech bubble and the great financial crisis but more dramatic so now the bursting cycle begins there is not just one but two elements at play here 
Firstly, indeed, the speculation has gone through the roof, which resulted in euphoric growth. And secondly, the number of investors involved in excessive borrowing has increased tremendously. During the bull markets, the aggressive speculation increases tremendously and the investors borrow out of proportion. The investors take on immense credit risk and use borrowed money with a goal to make more money. In other words, investors use leverage trading to multiply gains, but it is a double-edged sword and can easily wipe out their capital if the market moves in the opposite direction to which they expect it to go. After the Great Depression, strict laws were installed to limit the amount of borrowing while buying and selling securities. However, over time, the banks and institutions implemented several loopholes to dodge these rules to make it easier for investors to borrow a huge amount of money and as a result, leverage trading has become a norm again. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have also warned us for years about this shameful practice on Wall Street. In 2020, they had an exclusive interview with CNBC where they clearly highlighted the dangers of leverage trading and how it dominates today's markets. But before we take a listen, I will really appreciate if you kindly take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe button if you are enjoying the content. Now let's have a look at the clips from the interview. The people who are making money out of this unreasonable extension of credit argue for it and nobody's speaking against it. Now, and, and last time around we got the correct regulation that came and stayed for a long time on margin debt only because we had the worst depression in the history of the english-speaking world that's what it took to get a little sense into the politicians this time around it just the total return swap so what fixes it though i mean there have been suggestions that there needs to be well, more transparency the there needs to be a, a, really a crackdown on allowing people to lever up like this what, what's the, the answer? answer was never to have allowed most of the stuff to start but, but you allow the wrong kind of stuff to start and it runs on you it is tough to be very 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 tough to be a regulator to really go after the big stuff you're attacking the profit center of institution after institution after institution the prime brokerage thing by its very nature means you're le you're specializing in lending to the big swingers and of course it's dangerous and the rules they violated the same guy was getting four or five brokers at once and of course he was buying stocks to keep them up to prevent margin calls and once you start doing that you're headed for an uh, ugly ending and of course it happened but do you think that it would take a systemic breakdown before changes would actually get implemented again, like you referenced with the Great Depression? The last time it took the worst depression in the English-speaking world in all history. That's what it took to get the last correction. So what are my thoughts? Let's see how Minsky moment is confirmed. Now we already know that Minsky moment has two dimensions. The first one is a long period of euphoric growth and the second one is enormous speculation executed with leverage trading or borrowed money. Not only the opinions of Mohammed El Arian, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger indicate that the Minsky moment is approaching but also the graphs of meme coins and the immensely overvalued tech stocks all converge to the same conclusion. Michael Burry and Jeremy Grantham are bracing for a devastating crash across financial markets. They are not the only experts who have warned us that rampant speculation fueled by government stimulus programs can't fuel the increasing prices forever. The billionaire investors Leon Kupperman, Stanley Druckenmiller and Jeffrey Gundlach have all sounded the same alarm. Therefore, I believe we will see a Minsky moment where a sudden decline in market sentiment will lead to a catastrophic market crash. Let me know in the comments below, would you like me to do such videos in future? Furthermore, what sort of topics would you like me to cover in the future videos? If you like this video, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you you so much for watching i really really appreciate it you all are awesome and as always i will see you guys in the next video